Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a non-standard equation. This equation is called non-standard because we have an exponential function on the left hand side 3 to the power x and a linear function or a polynomial on the right hand side. Obviously if you have a non-standard equation you cannot solve it by standard means you could guess and check this which is probably what you did so far and I can hear you say what the answer is. Now, we have 3 to the power x equals 2x plus 1. And if you plug in some values, they definitely work, right? But we're going to work this in a different way. And I will also leave some questions for you as an exercise. I hope you don't hate me for that reason. But anyways, this is going to be good practice. All right, let's get started. I'm going to go ahead and I forgot to say I'm going to show you some graphs and results at the end. So let's go ahead and start by putting these things on the same side. How do we achieve that? We can multiply, so start with this. Probably leave some space there. And multiply both sides by 3 to the power negative x. And what that'll do is give you 1 here, because those are reciprocals, or you can think of it as 3 to the power 0, which is 1. So we get 2x plus 1 multiplied by 3 to the power negative x equals 1. Great. We got everything on the same side, but we need to adjust this a little bit more. So I'm going to be taking a bunch of steps, and every step I'll tell you what I'm doing, and you'll see the reasoning hopefully towards the end. Okay? So first thing I'm going to do is the coefficient of x here is a 2, but here it's a negative 1. So they don't seem to be matching well. I want them to be the same. So... I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by 2. For, so I guess you could consider this the second step. Divide both sides by 2. That'll give you 1 half here. And then we have an x and we have a negative x in the exponent. We can easily change that. And obviously changing the 3 to the power of negative x will be kind of harder because we have to raise both sides to the power of negative 1. I don't want to do it because then it'll put this in the denominator. Instead, I just want to multiply both sides by negative 1. If you do multiply both sides by negative 1, then you get what you need. This will become negative x minus 1 half. And this guy here is, will be basically unaffected because we're only distributing here. Don't over multiply, by the way. And the right hand side is just going to be negative 1 half. Easy, right? So far, so good. Hopefully, you are following. Now, the next thing I want to do is I got negative x minus 1 half here, and I got negative x here. They need to be the same. You get the idea? Uh, I know some of you already figured out what, what I'm getting at, but don't say it if you know it. We're going to go ahead and bring a negative 1 half here. And how can you do that? You can basically take this and then multiply both sides by... 3 to the power negative 1 half because then you will add the exponents and that's going to give you 3 to the power negative x minus 1 half. Get the idea? Okay. So, of course, we have to do the same thing on the right hand side. Multiply negative 1 half by 3 to the power negative 1 half. So, whatever we do on one side, we do it to the other side so that our equation is unchanged. Obviously, that's an equation. If you change it, it won't be an equation anymore. So, now we got this so far and we're very close to the result, but let's go ahead and combine these two things. Negative x minus 1 half multiplied by 3 to the power negative x minus 1 half. You get the idea? The number that multiplies 3 to the power of something is the same thing as the exponent of 3. Great. And now this can be simplified a little bit because this is 1 over 3 to the power 1 half, which is 1 over root 3. So we can write this as negative 1 half multiplied by 1 over root 3. Okay. Don't worry. We're going to rationalize the denominator, and we can even do it now. Let's go ahead and do it, if that bothers you. Uh, multiply by root 3 over root 3. That'll be a 3. Multiply by 2. That's going to be a 6. So you're going to get negative root 3 over 6 in the simplest form. Nice. We're super close to the result. The only thing we need to change now is to change the base. Change of base formula? No, that's for logarithms. With exponents, we can do it using Euler's formula or just Euler. <laughs> Euler's number is e, right? So we're going to use e here. And obviously, 3 can be written as e to the power ln 3. 
So if you go ahead and do that, replace 3 with e to the power ln 3, you're going to get negative x minus 1 half times e to the power ln 3 to the power negative x minus 1 half. And notice that I haven't really done anything. I just wrote 3 as e to the ln 3. So I'm not doing anything on the right-hand side. Make sure you don't overdo it or do something that you're not supposed to do. Now, we can go ahead and multiply these. These are exponents. So we can kind of write this as negative x minus 1 half times e to the power, and I'll probably write it as this expression inside the parentheses times ln3. I'll put the ln3 last, okay? Cool. Now we still have negative root 3 over 6 on the right-hand side, and what are we going to do with this, okay? So here's what we need to do next. Sometimes the pen will just act up, I guess static, electricity, whatever. And here's what we need. We wanted to bring it into a form that looks like t e to the t, and I'm going to apply a very special function on this. Did you guess what it is? Yes, it's called Lambert's W function. I know some people hate it. I don't know why. I used to hate it, but now I like it. It's kind of like using a calculator. I know some people, you don't get an exact result, and there's no explicit form of expressing it, except for the function of, like, let's say, uh, we have f of t equals this, and then numbers w would basically be f inverse. So, yeah, it's kind of hard to express in closed form, but it's helpful in so many situations. Anyways, think of this as an algebraic exercise. And now, the only thing we need is to bring it to the form t e to the t, we're missing our ln3 here. So we're going to multiply both sides by ln3 next, and that'll do the trick. All right. So now our expression is in the desired form, and we're going to go ahead and w both sides. Let's do it, okay? Put a giant w here. The whole thing will be w'd, and I should probably move this a little bit, and I'll put the giant w, and the whole thing is inside the parentheses, and put a, maybe a smaller w here for the negative root 3 over 6. So far, so good. Now, what happens with numbers w function? Whenever you get something like t to the t as an input, your output is going to be t. So fairly simple, right? You take this product, and it just turns it into a t. Cool. Or coffee, whatever. If you pick coffee here, then you'll get a coffee. Whatever you like. Or juice. No, orange juice. That's one of my favorites. Anyways, so when you apply Lambert's w, this is my t here. So it's going to give you negative x minus 1 half multiplied by ln 3 equals w of negative root 3 over 6. Of course, we got something nice on the left-hand side, but not something nice on the right-hand side. We've got to do a little bit of work, and that might seem kind of like unnecessary, but I, again, this is exercise, because in math, a lot of times you have to put things in different forms. So make it like workable, right? So make it easier to work with. Now we're going to do the same thing with that. So start with negative root 3 over 6. How can I put it into a Lambertable or Wable form? Here's what I can do. I start with this, right? Negative root 3. Oh, by the way, I forgot to do one thing here. When I multiply by ln3 here, I forgot to multiply by ln3. So let me back up a little bit uh, and add that quietly into my equation so that I can do it here too, right? This is supposed to be multiplied by ln3, of course. Now, the expression that I'm going to work on is this one instead of negative 3 over 6. That's the only difference, minor adjustments. So we're good now, okay? Great. So let's go ahead and put this in a t e to the t or c e to the c form. So first thing I'm going to do is write this as negative root 3 ln 3 over 6. And then I'm going to go ahead and multiply by root 3. I'm kind of, kind of reversing what I did with the radical because I do need a radical at the bottom. I mean, not necessarily, but it's going to be better. And now these two are going to give me a 3, negative 3, and negative 3 is going to cancel out with the six, negative ln 3 divided by 2 root 3. And now I want to write it as a negative 1 half times negative 1 half times 1 over root 3 times ln 3. Here we go. And then take this negative 1 half, put it over here as an exponent. I, I should probably switch those around, but you get the idea. And kind of write this as follows. 
This gives me 1 over root 3 multiplied by ln 3 to the power negative 1 half. And now 3 to the power negative 1 half is just ln 1 over root 3. We're almost there. Now we can go ahead and write this using the natural log. 1 over root 3 can be written as basically as it follows. ln 1 over root 3 times e to the power ln 1 over root 3. So this is replacing that. And now I can use w on this and guess that what that's going to give me ln 1 over root 3. Right? Awesome. <laughs> this is beautiful. Now what I can do with this is... I can just set it equal to the other stuff. What did I get from the other expression? I got this, right? Negative x minus 1 half times ln 3. And then this expression, and, and I could probably leave it at that, but this can be written as ln 1 over root 3 or negative 1 half times ln 3. And now ln 3 cancels out, leaving us with this. If you add 1 half to both sides, you're going to get negative x equals 0, which probably means x equals 0. So that's one of the solutions and the other one is yours to find. I'm going to leave it as an exercise. You work out the other one similarly but your goal is to get the other solution. Now let's go ahead and talk about uh, before we look at the graphs let's go ahead and take a quick look. If you replace x with 0 you get 1 equals 1. What's the other solution? Don't say it but write it down in the comment section down below. Here's the graph of the function. Uh oh I'm showing you the solution never mind. Which is kind of interesting, this Wolfram Alpha gave me this. I don't know why, because it just says the real solution, the only one is x equals 0. The other one is the analytic continuation of the Lambert store and so forth. Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.